In this episode, I'll show you how to shoot time-lapse photography. Autorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It's the camera store that has everything for the beginner photographer all the way to the advanced professional. You can check them out at adorama.com. Well, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about time-lapse photography. And quite simply, that's just taking a series of photos with your camera and then putting them together in a video editing software of some sort and creating a video. We'll do this for things that take a long period of time, and we can take that long period of time and smoosh it down into a short little video. So something like watching the sun come up or maybe watching a flower grow, something like that. So we're going to show you how to do that. In fact, we're going to take two episodes to show you how to do that. Today, I'm going to show you how to set your camera up and shoot everything. And then in the next week's episode, I'm going to show you how to do all the post-production stuff. But before we get to all that, I want to remind you that Adorama has some great photo contests and you can win some awesome prizes. So click the link and enter today. Well, to get started, we want to show you everything that you need to shoot time-lapse photography. Really, at the heart and soul of everything is this thingy. This is called an intravolometer. It's just a fancy word for saying you can hook this up to your camera and it will take pictures at a set interval. And that's really the key to shooting time-lapse videos. So these uh, come for every camera brand imaginable. And a lot of cameras even have an intervalometer built in, a lot of Nikon cameras specifically. So check your user manual. You might have that built in. It might be uh, under intervalometer or time-lapse. But what you'll do with this guy here is you'll set the interval for shooting. And the rule of thumb is if something takes a long period of time, like watching a flower grow, a rose bloom, something like that, or maybe shooting the construction of a skyscraper, well, you need a long interval. So something like an hour or a day, and you can set that on this. You can say, hey, shoot one picture every hour or one picture every day. Or if there's something that uh, works much faster, like cars zipping by or uh, pedestrians or maybe the sunrise, you'll want to shoot with a shorter interval, something like one shot every second or one shot every three seconds. That's usually where you want to start when you're starting to shoot time-lapse videos is shoot around once every second or two. So this guy right here, intervalometer, you'll set the duration. For the videos uh, that I shot, the sunrise, I shot one shot every three seconds. And for the traffic, I shot one shot every second, just to give you an idea. But you'll have to play with that to make sure you have the uh, interval that works for you. Once you've got your intervalometer and you've figured out your, uh, your interval, you need to set up your camera. And there's some basic things that you need to do. The first thing is, once you have your uh, composition set, so you'll get everything set, you need to manually focus your lens. Once you get it in focus, make sure it's on manual focus. You don't want your camera to be trying to focus with every single shot. You're going to be shooting hundreds and hundreds of shots, so you want to make sure it's on manual focus. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your camera is not on auto ISO because as the light changes over time, maybe the sunrise or the lights changing during the day, you don't want your ISO to be changing. You want it to be constant to control the noise. So I usually set mine around ISO 100 or 200, or if I'm shooting late at night, I'll set that much higher, 800 or 1600. It depends on your light. But make sure your ISO is set to something constant. Now as far as the uh, mode, I like to shoot my time-lapse videos in aperture priority mode. And there are two reasons for that. The first is I want to set a constant aperture. I usually shoot around f10, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you choose, but I don't want my depth of field to be changing. So in aperture priority mode, my aperture is set, my camera is set on a certain focal length, so my depth of field is going to stay consistent. And then as the lighting conditions change, well, my shutter will be changing to compensate for that. And so my camera is set up sort of in auto mode to change with the lighting, but it's not going to affect my depth of field at all. So aperture priority mode, manual focus. I have my intervalometer with my uh, my interval set and everything is set up. A couple more things that will really make a big difference to your time-lapse photography. They're going to be shooting hundreds if not thousands of pictures so make sure that you have a fully charged battery and if you're shooting those long long durations of days or weeks you need to make sure you have your camera plugged into uh, an outlet in the wall so that you have to have an AC converter so make sure you have plenty of juice. The other thing I do on my camera so I'll go into my menu and I'll make sure that I'm shooting in large JPEG mode. Now I know I say all the time to shoot in RAW, always shoot in RAW. This is one of those exceptions for me. 
And the reasons for that is if I'm shooting one shot every second, well, the buffer on my camera just can't keep up with that kind of shooting, and it's gonna take up an amazing amount of space. And when we get to post-production, you'll see that you might not wanna to have to process all those raw files. For me, shooting large JPEGs is gonna make a big difference. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure my battery lasts a long time. So there's an image review that usually comes up after you take a picture, it shows up on the LCD screen. I turn that off completely so it's not draining the battery because I'm not gonna look at every single picture for hours and hours. And also I'm gonna shut off the beep that goes off with the uh, focus. Now I know we're in manual focus, but on some cameras your camera will still beep if it sees that it's in focus. So I just shut that off because it's sort of annoying for me. So all that stuff is set up. And the last thing I have to mention is you have to make sure that you have a good, sturdy tripod. Your camera needs to be set and composed and your composition needs to be set. And to make sure nothing moves, you need to make sure you have a good tripod. Now there are exceptions to that rule. Matt Hill is an artist that shoots a lot of time-lapse videos handheld. And you can see some of his stuff on how they do that. We talked about how he does his stuff. But for the most part, you need a good tripod. So on a lot of cameras, there is an actual level that shows up on the LCD screen. So I highly recommend you use that when composing your image because that way you make sure everything is level, everything is good. And when you bring your images out of the camera, then you're not gonna have to do a bunch of corrections. All right, now all that's set up. Once you get everything done on your inter intervalometer, there's this little button that says start, stop. You push that, your camera's gonna start snapping photos and you'll get several hundred, if not several thousand photos as you're watching your sunrise or your flower grow or your building being built, whatever it is. Once all that's done, you need to take those photos throw them into post-production and create your video. And that's what we're going to do in the next episode. So this episode was how to set it up and how to shoot. Next episode, we're gonna show you how to edit this stuff in After Effects to get some really amazing results. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this episode. Don't forget to tune in next week to see how we take all these images and we do the post-production. And don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. It's absolutely free, and that way you won't miss a single episode. Speaking of episodes, there's another episode about time-lapse and stop-action photography that I did, and you can find that at the Adorama Learning Center. It goes into great detail on frames per second and all kinds of stuff, so you might want to check that out. That's the kind of stuff you're going to see here on Adorama TV, so make sure you subscribe. Well, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again next week. great looking prints at low cost, be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.